Hey guys, welcome to The Awakening. Today is a special edition of the show um, because today is four years since I lost my dad. And so I want to dedicate today's shows to dad, uh, today's show to dad, because as far as dad was concerned, the show must go on. And the show is going on. And I take you from the dark into the light. And today I just thought I'll just appear as me. <laughs> just as me. No wig. Just Lauren. So <laughs> it's mirror image. So it's confusing. <laughs> anyway, Dad. This time four years ago, I was... Just finished uh, P.F. Love Conquers All, the first show at the uh, Brighton Fringe. And I'd come out of there with Martin and Francis, and we'd done an amazing show. We'd had um, an amazing standing ovation where I stood up and I said, I lost my dad this afternoon. I was 2016, the 23rd of May, 2016 and got the standing ovation, and then consequently got a five-star review. And the reason I went on is because Dad always said the show must go on. Like the song by Queen, the show must go on. Dad always said that. I was brought up to believe that the show must go on. Dad put me on the stage when I was six years old, playing the accordion in concerts in Ireland. And, uh, and then when I was 13 years old, he took me to an audition for the Zadikov Children's Choir, the biggest children's choir in the country, and I got solos. So I'm trying to show you how we go from the dark to the light, and how today I'm very grateful that my, um, for what my dad helped me to learn. It was two o'clock in the afternoon on the 23rd of May, four years ago, that I rang up the hospital to find out how my father was because he'd been taken into hospital. And I heard the nurse saying in Hebrew, how, how can I tell her? Because I was in Brighton in the UK and dad was in hospital in Israel. How can I tell her that our father is practically gone? And I could hear her, she didn't realize I spoke Hebrew, and I heard her say this, and I thought, well, I know. Um, but then I thought, I've got a show to do tonight. And Dad always taught me, the show must go on. And not only that, the PF went on and did Mon Dieu and performed for the Versailles the night that the love of her life, Marcel, was killed in an airplane crash. And if you saw the show, or you know the life story of Edith Piaf, you'll know this. So this is taking you from the dark into the light. So I learned about my father dying. He was actually dying while I was on the phone. There was nothing I could do because he knew that I came back to do the, Bright the Brighton show. And I was going to go back to Israel the following couple of days later as soon as it was finished. But as dad was actually dying, um, I was in Brighton and sending him prayers and love while the phone was, 
been held towards me. And that's when dad went. And my brother-in-law said to me, he's gone. And there I was knowing that I'm going on to do a show that night. And of course, you're in the darkness. You're thinking, I've just lost my father. But then I've got Fra uh, Francis, the keyboard player, relying on me. I've got audiences. We sold tickets. The show must go on. And so I took myself from the darkness into the light, did a show of a lifetime, one of the best shows of my life where it wasn't difficult to get into the emotions that I needed when Piaf lost her little girl or when Marcel died. And it was an exhilarating exorcism in, in a positive way <laughs> to get these emotions to the surface. Mind blowing. I felt so connected to the audience and it was a brilliant performance for all of us and then at the end of it as i said came out about now i just collapsed and let go and cried i think probably all night so that's it that's how you take yourself from the dark into the light i remember dad i remember the things he taught me and that's why I am here today on Moving On TV. I'm not even counting the views. I'm not looking at who, who subscribed. I'm not looking at the likes. I'm just doing what I love. The show is going on. I'm not in lockdown. I'm out in nature today. That's where I was today, celebrating in nature, in the beauty of the world, enjoying love and nature, enjoying vegan ice creams, surrounding myself with the love, having fun, laughing, because that's what my dad would have wanted. I'm very, very grateful that dad never survived to be in this, because I somehow feel he wouldn't have dealt with it very well. And so I'm grateful that he was spared the lockdown. So what am I trying to say here, guys? I'm trying to say that there's a lot of darkness that's coming up around us and I navigate you from the dark into the light. I'm trying to say that you need to be strong and fall back in love with what makes you tick, whatever it is. Just get out there and do it. Do what you love because you don't know when that day will come and you won't be here anymore. Yes, my father had a wonderful long life. And then suddenly he fell and that was it. He didn't even know me anymore. It happened so fast. He went from this conscious, clever, wise man that you could have discussions with, that you could move on with, you, you could talk to, that understood everything you said, to a bit of a gibberish person that nobody understood him and he didn't understand you. He looked at me, his daughter, and when I went to see him and said, have you come to marry me? I've never experienced anything like that in my life and the darkness was everywhere. But I tell you what, I rose above it because I loved him so much. And I sang to him and I taught him how to read again. And it's all on Facebook. You can find all of that on Facebook. So what I'm saying, guys, is you need to go from the dark into the light, from the dark into the light. You need to do what you love. Thank you. 
do you love? How can you take the darkness and transmute it into a beautiful, beautiful crystal light of some kind? I give you that today. That is my gift to you. And if you want to come on to Moving On TV and do a program, use your talents. You're welcome to come on here whenever you want. Host your own program. I've got some fantastic people coming on next week. I'm so excited. The interviews I'm doing next week. I've got Brad Yates from Tapping on Tuesday. I've got the girls from um, Love, is, Love is All There Is. I think it's called, uh, I can't remember. It's something like that. Coming on, on tomorrow night. Uh, I've got Paul McDonald is going to be interviewed from Positivity Center on Monday. I've got, oh, I've got um, Yasin, Katabala Yasin from Uganda on Thursday. And I've got one more interview coming up with a wonderful healer. Um, who's learned to heal the body, the mind, and everything. And she will be coming on. Obviously, we can't stream yet because we need a thousand subscribers. And then I can stream these amazing people directly to you. So help me to grow moving on TV. Please like, subscribe, and share. I hope you enjoyed this. This episode is dedicated to Sydney Medali. I love you, Dad. And I know wherever you are, you are part of this awakening because you were too much of an incredible spirit. Now, dad didn't take any medication. He used to look up at the sky and he'd say, that's where the real doctor is. Maybe that's where I got it from, eh, guys? And he taught me some amazing stuff and he taught me not so amazing stuff. So a, a wonderful mirror. But what he did teach me, he taught me the love of animals and he taught me that love conquers all. And he taught me that we are all connected and we are all the same regardless of our religions because he was brought up by a non-Jewish family. And you know who you are. Found, Dad was more or less found in Vernon Beaches. So that's another story. And at some point I will tell a story. I might try and put a little bit of footage of Dad on here from a cat has nine lives because he is on YouTube somewhere. <laughs> oh, I love you lots. I pray for you and I send you love and blessings if you've lost anyone through this, the last uh, couple of months. And I hope that you can find a way to celebrate their lives, to come through, to become the amazing spirit that you are. Bye. Love you lots. You can contact me and moving on TV. And how, how do you want to use the book to help the veterans? How do you want to use the book to help people, that, the young men that didn't well, get a pension? If, if if they buy this book somewhere amongst all the people, hopefully they read or they have relations. Even these days in the late 80s or 90s, uh, ex-veterans like myself, who have been not received their full, uh, well, they should have got financial help from the beginning because we never knew, I never knew anything, nobody told me anything, but I have all the evidence where medically and so from the point of view of medical, I have all the documents which prove what happened to me and my present state of health. But those, are, those people who don't know, like I did know, were very naive, who came out of the army without any help whatsoever, any help at all. Just to give us I remember we were demobbed with a little bit of money and a suitcase and a suit, if I remember correctly. That's all we had, that's all I had, and my, the rest was up to, I was very, very lucky, mind you. Each one of them, if you look carefully into each of my nine lives, you see the connection between me and the cat. As my daughter says, I always landed on my feet.
Yes, this is my story. I'm 92, and I'd like everybody to know what, what really happened during the war. But Anzi Anzi, these leaflets, they used to send over a shell every half an hour or something like that while we were on the beaches to remind us that the Germans were still there. We were close to the casino where all the trouble was. We couldn't do anything about that. But it's in the story, my story, which uh, and they sent over these leaflets and upheld them. That's what they thought of us, the propaganda. And we all had a good laugh okay. when why, we read it. Why did you call it a cat has nine lives? Why what? Why did you call it a cat and, has nine and, lives? Ah, why? Why, well, because there's nine lives, you'll see there. I've, 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 uh, I've lived for nine different occasions. I've had nine different lives to live, and it's all on my tape. All right. All uh, Thank you. Now, remember, like a pussycat, there's no one to have nine lives, so I lie. So you've That's fallen on your feet.